so yeah, so I, I thought since we got a new map, uh, I, I was planning on doing just a soul winning update every three months to just sort of, you know, remind us, you know, what we're doing and how we're tracking, uh, how many people are hearing the gospel, how many people are getting saved. Uh, and I figured because we've got a new map now, it might be a good time to do that, even though we've only been doing it for about, I think about two months and a couple of weeks only. So coming up three months in, I think June 1st will be three months. Um, now, I just wanted to note to you guys that uh, I've, I've, if you haven't noticed already, and you probably have, that I've just changed uh, some of the statuses just to include a bit more. So Gave Attract, I've added as um, Gave Attract and Brief Discussion. And then Heard the Gospel can also be counted as an in-depth discussion. Uh, the reason is, is because sometimes you give somebody a tract um, and you have a bit of a talk with them, but you don't really have much of an in-depth discussion. And some people are asking me, well, which one do we classify it as? Do we classify it as Heard the Gospel or do we classify it as Gave a Tract? So I decided as a brief discussion, so this might be something where you don't really open your Bible, you don't really get into a lot of deep top topics, maybe you only give them a, a brief spiel about what the gospel is, uh, a few back and forth, um, but then you move on, maybe they didn't have time to talk more. So we'll label that as I uh, gave a track or a brief discussion. And then I've put here as heard the gospel in-depth discussion, just because we have a lot of Muslims in our area. And I find you may get into a lot of conversation about the Bible, about Muhammad, about Islam, and not really feel that you've spoken a lot about the gospel because you haven't really gotten to that point yet. So I still want to label that as an in-depth discussion because um, you know, if you did spend a lot of time talking with them, uh, let's mark that one as either heard the gospel or uh, had a, uh, an in-depth discussion. Now the other things I've changed as well is for orange, uh, well, let's change that to if you're following up with somebody but they are not saved. Because I want to be able to differentiate between the people we are following up with that did get saved and the people we're following up with that didn't get saved. Because when we look at this saved number, I, I want to be able to either look at that or that and then we can get a total of how many people have called upon the Lord. Whereas if, if we put following up whether they're saved or not saved, that number sort of gets lost in there. Um, and I guess if they're already saved and maybe we're following up with them, I guess it's not so, not so big. We'll just sort of make it uh, this green one too. So keep that in mind. If you do know of any pins that you've put where you're following up with them and they did get saved, if you can just go back and update it and maybe make it green, um, that way we can differentiate between the saves and the not saves, not saved. Uh, and then if they are saved and we're following up with them, I've changed this last one to either they're a ch somebody that comes to our church, which is one on the map because our house, uh, or um, oh, I think I might, oh, I might not have actually taken this screenshot when I, when I added my pin, so that's why it says zero, but uh, f following up as somebody that's saved. So hopefully that clears up the, the new statuses. Um, one thing we've been doing as well, uh, uh, and we, uh, me and Kevin have been starting to do it, but when you talk to people and, you know, either, I mean, any of these really up and above, I mean, if you, if you talk to somebody and you feel there's somebody that we, we want to send more information to, let's try and get at least their email address because then we can subscribe them to our email newsletter. They'll be getting the weekly sermons and the blog updates. It'll keep them in contact with our church. So I don't know the best way to ask them. You know, some things I'm thinking about in my head, you know, you could just ask them whether they want to be subscribed to our email newsletter. Some people might not like that, you know, being subscribed to something. Maybe there's a bit of bad stigma against that. So you can try saying to them, you know, would you like us to uh, send you some information that might be helpful? You know, if you give us your email address, you can send it to you via email. And then if you get their email address, we'll just subscribe them to the email list. And then whatever goes onto our blog uh, will be emailed to them weekly. So let's try that um, now when we go soul winning. You know, when, if you do uh, you know, get somebody saved or they want to be followed up or they're already saved or um, you know, we had a good conversation with them, uh, let's not just end it at, hey, I hope to see you at church. Let's at least you know, see if they have a Bible because that's one way we can go back to them, give them a Bible. Um, or ask them if uh, you know, they learnt a lot from talking to you. Say if they want to learn some more, we can send them some information via email. And they're happy to give us their email and then we'll just subscribe them. And then they can decide if they want to be unsubscribed. Um, they can remove themselves from the list. Now, just a couple of interesting stats I just wanted to point out. Uh, in, in this screenshot, we've actually included uh, all the not homes. But 
you know, one thing, and, and even if you look at that screenshot, if you include every door, if you were to add up yellow and up, so either they, you had an in-depth discussion or they heard the gospel or you're following up with them, they, they were saved or they are already saved or we were following up with them as a saved person, those percentages add up to 7.45%. So seven and a half people out of every hundred. Um, when you knock on their door, seven, out of, seven to eight out of every hundred will talk to you. Um, and I think that's a, that's a pretty good statistic if you think about it. Um, if you knock on a hundred doors, you'll get into at least seven or eight conversations. Another thing as well is, if you look at how many people were aggressive, so actually outwardly or visually aggressive and were upset or unhappy that we were there and actually rude or angry with us, it's only 0.32%. Um, now that might increase a bit when we take away the not homes, but I think what's encouraging about that is if somebody is fearful about going soul winning, I mean, you can see that, you know, it's a very, very, very small fraction of people that will actually be upset at you. So there's really nothing to be scared about. I mean, they might be not interested, but they're polite about it. So, you know, people that worry about going soul winning and people are just going to be angry at them and rude at them. And I mean, it, it's seven people out of how many doors we've knocked? 2,216. So that's 0.32%. Uh, it goes up to 0.52% if you remove the, um, the not homes. Because what this, uh, what this table doesn't show you is the time it takes. So you might look at that table and you might say, whoa, you know, is it a waste of time? Because 420, 20% are not interested, 40% are not home. But then what, this, what these numbers don't show you is the amount of time each door takes. And obviously when somebody's not home, you're only there for like a couple of seconds. And if somebody's not interested, you know, maybe you're there for like 15 seconds and you move on to the next door. So what I did is I, I took away not home and then I took away everything up to um, gave a tract or a brief discussion. So I, I looked at the numbers if we took away not home, and then I looked at the numbers if we took away the first three stats. So since the stats don't take into account the time at each house, if you remove not home, the amount of people that will talk to you when you knock on doors goes up to 12.15%. Um, and if you take away those that are not interested, that, that you know, are not interested in talking to you, it goes up to 18. So almost one out of every five people that you talk to that you know, are home and are, are happy to talk to you um, will either have a brief discussion with you or will accept the tract or you know, they'll um, talk to you and hear the gospel. So I think it's, uh, it's pretty encouraging. And you know, besides the obvious statistics of the fact that we've knocked you know, over 2,000 doors, you know, over a hundred plus people since knocking this area have heard the gospel, which would not have otherwise heard the gospel. And, you know, you know let's say about 20 plus, because probably some of these orange ones are saved. 20 plus people have been saved. Now, that, that's pretty awesome if you think about it. Now, when I put this map up, I just want to just close with two thoughts. And, and really the two verses that sort of come to mind is... Um, I, Sorry, this, this post is just a preview. It's not actually been edited yet. I'm just sort of gathering some thoughts. But uh, oh, maybe it didn't. Uh, oh, here we go. Uh, Acts 5, 27 to 29. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council. And the high priest asked them, saying, Did we not straightly command you that you should not teach in this name? And behold, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. And in Acts 17, 6, it says, And when they had found them, so this is Paul and, and, um, and Silas, when they had found them, they drew Jason and certain brethren unto the rulers of the city, crying, These that have turned the world upside down are come hither also. And, and may, may it be said about this church, you know, that, um, you know, Th those that have turned the upside down, now they've come hither also. They've come to this area to turn the world upside down and to fill Sydney with the, with the doctrine of Jesus Christ. Because I had two thoughts when I was putting this map up and then I highlighted that little area that you can see in orange. One is, 
that little area, and, and, and you know, it's not exact because uh, some of these numbers actually come from a small group of us that do Sanssouci. So I don't know how many of those 2,200 doors uh, ones in Sanssouci too that are not actually included in that little area. But if you think about it, when you look at that map, we've knocked over 2,000 doors. We've had over 20 plus people saved. But look at how much area we've actually covered. It's a tiny area of the area that we are aiming to cover. And it just makes me look at that and I just wonder, man, great things are about to happen. Because if this, if this is the sort of uh, thing that happens in such a small area, imagine what's going to happen in the area that we haven't even knocked yet. Uh, and the other thing was, I was thinking, you know, when I, when I track the attendance, you know, I think on average it's about six to eight people going soul winning twice a week. Now, six to eight people going soul winning twice a week can knock 2,200 doors, get 20 plus people saved, you know, 120 hear the gospel. Man, just imagine if it wasn't 6 to 8. Imagine if it was 10. Imagine if it was 20. Imagine if it was 40 or 100. And it, it, it sort of saddens you that more churches don't do what we're doing. Because if, even if we were just, just to double or triple, uh, who knows what sort of um, area we could cover and the amount of time we could do it in. I mean, we could cover so much more area in so much less time. Um, so hopefully our church starts to see growth. We start to see people um, getting on board because I believe we can do great things. There's great things in store for us. So may God continue to use our church.